Jared Poland from Nosephoto.com, and this is your... It's just that I made an appointment with my proctologist to get some type of cream or something. Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Preparation H and their all new No Touch Rapid Relief Spray. But irritation happens. That's right, for those flare ups, new Preparation H Rapid Relief with Lidocaine Spray puts their strongest medicine in a convenient spray form with no mess. This fast acting spray relieves irritation and reduces swelling, itching, and burning so you can get back to focusing on your day and photo shoots. And if you're more old school, you could still get the good old Preparation H cream or even the new cooling wipes. To learn more and to discover the brand that knows butts, head on over to PreparationH.com. First up, kicking off this busy week of major photo news, we have something big from Nikon. How dare you? Much to many Nikon fan people's chagrin, Nikon continues to give me exclusive first looks of new products prior to them being announced. In the past, I got my hands on the 402.8, the 805.6, and more recently, the 85 1.2, weeks or months before they've been announced. And now, I've gotten to go hands on with the brand new Z8. But I can only share with you the specs and some graphics that Nikon supplied me with. Go figure, huh? Nonetheless, this is huge news. After years of waiting, countless rumors and cameras with subpar AF, <laughs> Nikon has, well, well, they, they've done something. The Z8 sports a very similar look to the Z9, but without the bulk and size that comes with a built-in grip. Nikon definitely won't win any awards for the tiniest and lightest cameras at this point. Anyway, the Z8 houses a 61.2 megapixel sensor that's probably manufactured by Sony and probably very similar to the one in Sony's A7R5, meaning it's not stacked. Now in terms of frames per second, you will get nine frames per second with the mechanical shutter. Yes, it still has a mechanical shutter, unlike the Z9. Close the shutters. And 12 frames per second with the electronic shutter. Close shutters. You have a native ISO range of 50 to 32,000, which will be fantastic for those landscape photographers. Now speaking of landscape, photographers, you won't need the 493 face detect AF points and Xpeed 7 processor that's borrowed from the Z9. Now in my brief hands-on with the Z8, I can tell you that the AF is similar to the Z9, which means it's still kind of a battle to use from time to time. Phone call, I wonder who that could be. Hello? Hello, Jared. Oh, it's Greta Turnberg with Nikon PR. How are you? How dare you speak poorly of our autofocus? You clearly don't know how to set it up or use it. It's all your fault. Goodbye. Uh, okay, bye, bye, Greta. Yep, it's clearly all my fault because when I picked up the Canon R8 for the first time and took it out into the real world, I nailed focus time and time again right out of the box. I'll take the box. Anyway, the Z8 has one CF Express B card and one SD card slot, 3.2 inch screen with now outdated four axis tilting touchscreen, which is the same one from the Z9 and does have an optional pen 15.5 vertical grip. They do tell me that the body will clock in at $3,599 and be available for pre-order at the end of April, which coincides with the launch of the D to Z trade up program. All you need to do is trade in any D and get a credit towards a new Z. Will you be stuffing your D into a Z? Let me know down below. Next up, Canon says, we see your Z8 Nikon and we raise you the R1. Yep, it's finally official. The Canon R1 is real and I've got some specs. Now, before I get to the specs, I have to tell you my predictions from a year ago were more closely aligned with the yet to be announced R6 Mark II and R8. But knowing how stacked those cameras are, prepare to have your mind blown. Whoa. The R1 has an all new stacked 45 megapixel BSI sensor that's capable of shooting with the electronic shutter at 60 frames per second in 14-bit RAW, 90 frames per second in 12-bit RAW, and 200 frames per second in small RAW with full auto focus. On top of that, Canon has added pre and post RAW recording for up to one second before you take a photo and one second after you release the shutter. Welcome to Shutter Island. Yes, this is a whole new world for photography. Dazzling place I never knew. 
PR1 has dual CF Express B card slots and a massive buffer to help make sure you never outrun the camera. In terms of autofocus, the R1 has an all new Digic 10 Plus processor and is the first Canon camera to utilize quad pixel multi integrated live focus or MILF for short. Are you trying to seduce me? There's an upgraded 5.76 million dot EVF with second generation eye control and new five axis flip out rotating 3.2 inch touch LCD screen. In terms of video, it will shoot 8K 60 for up to 30 minutes. 4K 240 for 60 minutes, unlimited 4K up to 120, all thanks to a new integrated body design with a passive liquid cooled center. It's basically like Canon put the R3, R5, and R6 Mark II into a lab, shot them with some gamma rays, and bam! Turned them into the Incredible Hulk. Phone call. Oh, I wonder who that could be. Hello? Ah, it's Roberta L. with Canon PR. Oh, you can confirm that's exactly what happened? They shot it with gamma rays? Thanks. Bye. Now, in terms of cost, it looks like Canon is going directly after Sony and Nikon's jugular. The R3 has dropped from $59.99 to $49.99, and the R1 will sell for $6,500 and be released on May 15th. And get this, on May 15th, one hour after launch, Canon will apologize that they might not be able to meet the demand after selling all 14 units they produced. 14! Uh, Will uh, you be getting an R1? Cause I'm gonna get two. two. Speaking of R1s, I've got a question for you. Have you listened to our weekly podcast, Raw Talk yet? If not, could you please leave a comment down below with the hashtag have not so I can get an account for how many of you there are? Also, if you haven't checked it out as of yet, they come out every Friday wherever you get your podcasts. And finally, not wanting to be left out of all the major news this week, Sony has announced n n nothing? Question mark? Who typed a question mark? Oh, goal! I wonder who that could be. Hello? Oh, it's Keisha with Sony PR. You do have a major announcement this week? Are, are, you, are you sure that's actually a major announcement? All right, I'll let everybody know. Introducing the new Sony one terabyte CF Express Type A tough card. When other companies continue to push the boundaries of cameras, Sony keeps pushing a dead consumer format, just like they did with beta. If it was any good, it would have been on beta. Anyway, if you're interested in this one terabyte tough card, it can be yours starting today for the price of $1,999. Yeah, $2,000 for their memory card. Way to go, Sony, great job. And there you have it. That's your April Fool's Fix for 2023. To check out last year's April Fool's Fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya. D did you think I would really wear a Nikon Z shirt? Shoots with Z? No. And it's so itchy too. This shirt's so damn itchy. It's like starch.